Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington, and I'm here with my co-host, Forbes Riley. Forbes, we've seen you for many years on TV as a celebrity fitness expert, as well as a television show host. And of course, we all recognize you as one of the original sharks from Shark Tank. You know, today we've got a very special topic close to my heart, and it's women facing financial challenges. Mm. And with us is one of the leading experts on that. Hello, well, hello Ms. Catherine Roberts. Nice to meet you. Thank you. It is Good such day. a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, you're very welcome. You know, when it comes to women and financial challenges, you've been instrumental in helping so many people. Tell us what you do. Well, for more than 35 years, I've been a small business owner and entrepreneur living in the United States and the United Kingdom. And I've helped hundreds of women with the initial development and startup of their business, setting up systems, setting up marketing. But nearly 10 years ago, all of that changed for me. Mm, what happened? Um, my mother became very, very ill, and she needed full-time, 24-hour care. Mm. Uh, but she, even though she was a small business owner, she'd been a role model for me all my life, very independent woman, right. she, she knew about the day-to-day -day operations of her business, but she didn't know anything beyond that immediate cash flow. She had never planned for her financial future. So she was in no way prepared for the cost uh, required to take care of yourself in her old age. You know, this sounds all too familiar that, you know, you work really hard, but if you don't think you're ever gonna not work or die or get sick. Exactly. And if you don't plan for that, and she didn't, what ultimately happened? Because usually a nursing home or financial aid or something very devastating. Absolutely. I mean, very, very fortunately for her. And, and to compound that, let me just back up for a second, because yeah. to compound that, she and my father had been divorced about 20 years earlier. It was amicable. Oh. There was no mm. problem. But she was now completely dependent upon herself for her finances. And this is a problem or an issue right. for nearly 65% of women today. Mm -hmm. They are going to have to sustain themselves or be financially responsible for their own lives. So this was the change for you then where you decided you're gonna focus on helping women Absolutely. deal with all these financial challenges. Absolutely. Right. You know, fortunately for her, my brother stepped in to the tune of about $50,000 a year. Um, and, you know, most of us, we wouldn't want or, or we would be devastated to have to ask our loved ones or our children to make that kind of a sacrifice How did it make you us. feel watching your role model? It was unbelievable. Really? I mean, everything was okay on the, on, you know, it was a facade. Everything looked great. You know, here she was successful in business. She, you know, was working uh, very late in life. She had apparently everything going for her. Um, but the truth was, she just didn't have what it took to sustain her into old age. Okay, so now you make a decision that, okay, I'm gonna help people like my mom. Is that what happened? Absolutely, okay. yes. Okay, and how did you get started? What, did, what do you do? Well, here's the thing. Even if you are very savvy and, mm -hmm. and have a successful business or you're a professional career woman, um, there may be issues that you're not aware of underlying the surface. So mm -hmm. for example, professionals, um, they may go through peaks in their career. They may go through ups and downs, booms and bust cycles, or an, an entrepreneur, they may um, do very very well up to a point, but then something sort of gets in their way and, and stops them, or right. they can't meet those financial goals. So um, it, wherever you are, whether you're a successful businesswoman or a, a career person, or if you're somebody that's never actually dealt with finances, um, you've relied on somebody else to manage their finances and you've never um, felt comfortable or needed to do that yourself, no matter what your situation, you all have, we all have these underlying beliefs or uh, limiting beliefs, really, paradigms that we've been gifted, mm. grown up with. They're subconscious and we might not even be aware of them, but they stop us and they hold us back. Now, you created a system. There's something that you do. And yeah. by the way, you've had tremendous success. Incredible success. I mean, almost embarrassing success sometimes. Mm. But it's a simple eight-step system right. that helps women identify their limiting beliefs and then make changes so that they can get out of their own way, so that they can remove those blocks that are keeping them um, emotionally tied to money rather than logically and rationally okay. looking this at their finances. This could be women entrepreneurs or women that are married or women that are divorced, really almost at any stage because Anyone. what you're saying is there are some limiting beliefs in many cases already inherently as women are growing up. Well, here's one. Right? I grew up watching a story that said you're a little princess and some white knight's going to come and save you. <laughs> I've got a story like okay, that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. 
okay, so this woman, she, she fresh out of university, she got a very, qui very quickly, she became um, very successful in an architectural firm. She went right up. She got a great big salary. She went out and bought clothes. She was spending money. She got in debt. She had never been given any tools for man managing money. She oh, had wow. no idea what to do with it. <laughs> The bailiff knocks on the door. Oh no. She's about to lose everything. Her boyfriend at the time rides in on his white horse and rescues her. Uh huh. She marries him. She gives up her, her career. She um, becomes a wife and a mother and a very loving relationship, but she never deals with those issues. Um, Midlife, she decides that she wants to be creative, she wants to have her own business, um, but she has all of this old baggage. Mm, wow. These old wow. fears, you know. Wait, so it's why she specializes in women. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it is. Get women. to the end of the story. <laughs> well, you know, after just a few sessions, she was actually able to address the emotional side of that right. and put it behind her so that she could learn about how to manage finances. She could learn how to, you know, balance a checkbook. I mean, she'd never even looked at these things. I know. Mm. And I, even as a successful businesswoman, you would be surprised that right. it, it's this, it's a hole in, in our upbringing as women, and I know you can't relate to it as an entrepreneurial shark, but trust right. me, it's right, real. Right, right. So let, let's talk about a woman that whose husband is maybe very successful and um, they have a life together. How does that woman deal with being independent and, and dealing with maybe some challenges that she might be facing. Do you have any examples? I there? do, and you know, it doesn't it doesn't always come up sort of at end of life. Sometimes you just midlife you you've raised your family, things are, are moving along, right. and you decide that you want something more. Um, and I had a client who was in a situation like that. She um, she had married again her childhood sweetheart. They had started from nothing, and they built a multi million dollar business. Wow. She was instrumental in that. Mm -hmm. She was a big part of that, but she never drew a salary. She was never compensated financially, and she lived very comfortably. So on the surface, again, right. nothing wrong, no issues. But the way it made her feel, she didn't have access to her own money. So she didn't even have a checking account. Oh, wow. You know, so if she wanted to make a big purchase, if she wanted to invest in something, it all had to go back to her husband. So the family had money, and, yep. and, but she couldn't get really access right. to it. And, and the thing is, she didn't even feel comfortable talking to her husband about it. it you know, it had become the monster in the room. It was, it was just too uncomfortable, and she didn't know how to approach him. So what did you do? Well, we worked on those fears and those limiting beliefs that were keeping her stuck there. She um, had a conversation with her husband where she was able to explain how their financial arrangements felt her dis made her feel disempowered. So even though she had no intention of ever leaving him, it made her feel trapped and she didn't want to feel like she had no choice. How she wanted she, how to be free choice. You? She, um, she found me on an online search. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what, are, what are we searching for if we want to find you? Well, you can find a link to my website right beneath this video. Uh -huh. um, and I have free resources, tools, things that you can download and put into place right away. I want to hear the last part of that story, though. You, you, this woman, you said, get a checking account and right? all what other right. things. Follow, follow your horses, right? So, no, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> get to the end. Love um, she built a, She started a business. She was an artist. She, she um, now has a, a very significant bank account. Um, with funds that she deserved and she earned through the business, but also that she makes through selling her own artwork. Still okay. married though. Absolutely. See, I okay. think that's the big thing. Sometimes if you've set this up, you know when you get married, I don't know how your arrangement is, but you gotta have this joint account and I don't really deal with numbers, so he would deal with it yep. all. And then one day you wake up going, hmm, I, there is no independence. Right but you don't want to leave, and it's not a bad thing. Exactly, but sometimes you don't know how to have the conversation. And it, it does start with childhood, as, as you mentioned, you know, things, society gives us these pictures that, you know, wealthy people are selfish or greedy sometimes, mm. you know, it's portrayed in the media that way. At home, money's not talked about. It's a taboo, sac uh, taboo subject, mm. like sex. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it is, I mean, I ever ask somebody how much they make, and they all, everyone mm. gets all kind of weird. We're weird yeah. about money anyway, exactly. but I think in particular, Women are a little more uncomfortable than men. Do you find that? Absolutely, and they don't know where to go to discuss it. They don't know how to get answers. Um, they, they are almost embarrassed. There's no financial education out there that they can access easily. Mm. They're almost embarrassed to ask the questions, to admit that they don't know Kathy, what they don't know. You, you are an entrepreneur. I mean, think about it. You've gone out, you've saw the niche in the market, and now you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a mentor to all these women that have these challenges, yep. and you've developed this eight-step system, right? 
Yeah, and it's amazing. The, the thing that I love about it, this is why it's my big mission. Um, it, it's to help women understand their relationship to money, mm -hmm. wherever that is, wherever they are on the spectrum, and then give them the tools to address it and deal with it rationally and logically so it doesn't have to be this emotional burden. Let me, let me ask a question. If there's a woman out there right now and she's feeling this, first of all, who is your ideal coaching client? Well, any woman. Any woman that is unsure or uncertain about their relationship to money, right. if money gives them anxiety, they feel any, um, you think about your finances and you feel fear, or you feel worry, or you feel like you're drowning in debt, or that you're working every single second just to stand, you know, tread water, to stay on top. Mm -hmm. um, any of those issues we can look at and get to the source of and change. So you could be married, unmarried? Yep, absolutely. Young? How young? Um, oh, oh, I love that you asked that. Actually, one woman, um, the woman who had the knight in shiny armor, she went through the program and she realized that it was so valuable for her that she gifted the program to her sister and to her 21-year-old daughter. Awesome. So her daughter doesn't have to go through the, the challenges and pain that, sh that what, she experienced. What I like about what you discussed with that particular person is that she actually had made money but had challenges keeping it. And so you, you start with people that maybe don't have any money, but yeah. you can show them possibly how they can save the right way or, or manage their money in the proper fashion also, absolutely. correct? It makes absolutely no difference where they are on the spectrum. That's um, awesome. I would love you to look out there because there's a woman sitting here right now who is too afraid to approach the subject. And perhaps she didn't know where to look. Obviously she's listening to us. She got here right now. Tell her what you get to do for her. If money in any way causes you anxiety, when you think about your financial situation or when you think about the future, if you're afraid that you haven't the resources to live a long life and, and sustain yourself financially, um, actually, if, if you have uh, doubts about what you're doing with your life ex as far as a career goes, in other words, you're stuck in a job that may not you know, fit you or that may not be true to your true purpose, and, and you don't know how to start a business, or you're dependent on someone else and you're staying in an unhealthy relationship or in a happy relationship because you are afraid to go out on your own um, and, and what that would mean for you financially. So if that is you, I would love to help you. Also, please remember that my mission is to help as many women as possible. So if you belong to a group or an organization and you would like me to come speak to your members, I would be happy to do that. You can get in touch with me via the website for that too. That is very it powerful. It applies to many, many women. It's, you know, it's a pretty broad category, Absolutely. but I love the focus of women. Thank you. Yeah. And I like to, so there's a lot of people out there who can, right now that is not my situation, but I'll tell you what, I have a lot of friends who it is. So perhaps that we talk to our community, uh, I belong to a couple of women, like Working Women of Tampa Bay is one of my organizations, to yeah, say that, have you come out and speak? Do you do that a lot? Absolutely, I love doing that. What is some of the feedback you get from a group of people who you've spoken to? Well, oftentimes people won't get, get excited in the moment because they have to reveal where they are personally. Right. But I offer 30-minute strategy sessions. You know, I have one-on-one -on -one coaching if, if people don't want to be involved in a group. So it, money can be a very touchy subject for people. Does it, cost, ways. Does it cost to get, uh, make a phone call to you? Or Absolutely you, not. So you have a, like Absolutely a free not. kind of a startup situation. Absolutely, right? yes. She has to. She's dealing with money. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, you know, so I, it may not be a good fit for everybody. You know, right. so I want to make sure that I really can help somebody take a step forward. I, I'm so excited by what you're doing. I want my daughter to hear you speak. Where can we hear you speak? You can hear me speak anywhere that you like. I speak worldwide. I travel worldwide. If you have an organization or a group that you would like me to speak for, they just need to get in touch with me. You do webinars also? Or? Uh, yeah. In fact, most of my coaching is done online because my clients are worldwide. So um, we connect via Skype or, or FaceTime. So some of your clients you never even meet. That's the, the, you, Sadly, you that's true. Of, yeah. Sadly, that's true. That we meet virtually. A, a global entrepreneur for yes. women then, yeah. right? Now, okay. you got a very big smile on your face. How do you feel about what you do? I love it. You know, there's nobody out there. The world is different now. When I was growing up, there was no financial education in the school system. There was not talked about. You can find things online, but you can find just about anything online. So it's very hard to know whether you're trusting a reliable source. And as I said, money is a very personal subject. And we'd all like more of it. We'd like the freedom that it comes with, the confidence it builds. Absolutely. and just empowering us women. I want him to hear this. It's <laughs> very, very exciting. I want to thank you from the bottom of my thank heart you. for sharing this today. Thank Catherine, you both. Great having Such you. Such a pleasure being here. He's a good woman's man. Yeah. <laughs>